you see dots, we'll, we'll consider that a go. All right, um, I, have a, uh, I have a spatial proclamation to read, and I'm going to jump right into it. Whereas the month of October is the National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and whereas home should be a place of warmth, love, tranquility, and security, however, each day in the state of Idaho, Idaho, hundreds of victims of domestic violence and their children seek safety and services from community-based domestic violence programs. Whereas family violence is a crime that transcends race, religion, age, ethnicity, ethnicity, <laughs> uh, race, uh, religion, age, and economic stature, whereas domestic violence has tremendous effects on our community, including the judicial system, the health care system, our schools, neighborhoods, families, and friends. And whereas Canyon County Violence Task Force is a coalition of organizations that continue to directly confront this crisis, now therefore, we, the Canyon County Board of Commissioners, take this time to remember those victims whose lives have been tragically taken, encourage and support survivors who have, excuse me, survivors, excuse me, encourage and support survivors who have escaped abuse and address the importance and value of community connectedness to prevent and respond to domestic violence. We do hereby proclaim October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and encourage all Canyon County residents to take an active role in addressing this issue in our community throughout the year and especially the month of October 2013. Signed the Board of Canyon County Commissioners, Steve Rule, Kathy Alder, and Craig Hansen. I'll now turn the time over to Sheriff Donahue. Thank you, Steve, and thank you all for coming today. What an important message that the Board of County Commissioners, with their proclamation, recognizing not just the, the issue at hand, but the work that's being done to address that issue. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. And quite frankly, we do have a lot of issues in domestic violence. As you all know, I'm a big proponent to stop domestic violence. I'm very active in the community and throughout the nation in spreading the message that we do have to stop this tremendous epidemic, but I, quite frankly, I'm encouraged that we will and that we can, and I'm encouraged more so because of the people that are standing here before me today, obviously flanked by very important people to my right and to my left, but the most important people, in my opinion, are those survivors and, and, and people, victims who have gone through this process and yet stand before you today, the, the Voices Group. <laughs> And I'll stop and give you my applause, the vo ladies of voices who have not just endeared this, but have survived. And not just survived, but they have said, you know what, it's not going to happen to me, not on my watch, not today, not ever again, and we're going to stand up and, and together, we're going to do something about it. So voices, ladies. And I'd also like to add that I think that we are seeing a tremendous effort, not just again, not just countywide, but nationwide. I recently did a uh, press conference with Governor Otter and the First Lady, Lori Otter, and I was so blessed to be a part of their program and, and encouraged by the words they have to say. And if you speak at all with Governor Otter, he'll tell you that the family unit is the strongest backbone to the United States Constitution that if we break down the family unit, we break down the strength of this nation. And his words are very compelling, they're very strong. I'm honored to be a friend of his, and I'm honored that he has endorsed our program of combating domestic violence. So thank you, Alicia and Kim, for the work that you do. I, can, I will end with, I'm absolutely set in my mind that we will stop this, but we have to do it together. It takes each and every one of us divided. We are weak, but together we are strong. You have my pledge that I will be with you every step of the way, and I will take the point. I will not fight from the back, I'll fight from the front. And so I will be with you. I appreciate the efforts here. Brian Taylor, our prosecuting attorney, and with that, I'll turn time over to him. Thank you, Sheriff. 
Sheriff. I, am. I always echo what the Sheriff says and always agree with him for the most part. I think it is so important that why we're here is for awareness, awareness for domestic violence. And although October is the month of uh, this awareness, this awareness and the discussion should take place year round. It's that conversation that has to take place. We can't be shy about it. We can't be trepid of having those difficult conversations to deal with the ladies that uh, suffer this awful, awful thing that happens. And the men as well that take, uh, that are victims of this. You know, I was just reading an article before I came out here. Uh, I'm always a big fan of statistics. And the most recent statistics, uh, when we talk about domestic violence, every 15 seconds in this country, somebody is a victim of domestic violence. And every seven hours in this country, somebody is uh, the victim of a homicide as a result of domestic violence. So having this conversation, having us coming together to talk about it, acknowledging that it exists. And it's not just individuals in the criminal justice system, the victims that have gone through it talking. I'm very pleased that we have media that have done articles on it. I know Judge Lee has uh, really been instrumental in starting a domestic violence court to educate. It takes all of us together, it's much like uh, the sheriff says. We have to work together because individually we can't do it on our own. And it is so important that this conversation take place, that the education takes place. And once uh, we're educated, hopefully we can combat this disease, this epidemic that has plagued our country for way too many years. So I thank you all for coming here. And it really is a tribute for us taking a stand against domestic violence. Thank you very much. I'm Kim Ivacek, and this year I have the privilege of serving as DV Task Force President, and I'm also Executive Director at Advocates Against Family Violence and Home Store Shelter. Last year we served 6,785 victims through our programs. And when you look at the statistic, 25% of what's reported, that's only if what's reported will be affected by domestic abuse at some point in their life. It's critical for these programs to go in. It's critical to have a voice to say, you know what, we stand against this. It's critical to have every single program running the way that they run and to be able to reach out and affect those that are being affected by it. Our main focus right now is on prevention, and that is why we have our teen outreach program um, that we've started this last year, and we are working with Idaho Department of Juvenile Corrections, Canyon County Juvenile Corrections, Job Corps, and now Foster Care Program of Idaho have tapped into us as well so that we can truly eliminate violence at a much younger age. If they're educated and they know that they have a choice and they can break that cycle, we're that much further ahead. So thank you each and every one for supporting every single thing that there is out there to stand against domestic violence. Judge Lee, thank you so much for DV Court. You guys, thank you so much for standing behind us in our efforts to eliminate violence. Thank you. We certainly want to thank all those that attended today and especially those leaders but you know it's really nothing without everybody who steps up to stop violence uh, that'll conclude today's presentation and again thank you all for coming and being a part of this